Okay, so so for the drawing, I'm gonna hold it up close so you can really see. I'm gonna put a little dot in the middle of my circle here. And I want to radiate out from this dot of just a couple of lines. Doesn't mean my petals are gonna be here, but I want to make sure that everything is following these lines so that everything is radiating out from the center like a flower would. Now you have to imagine, I'm gonna use a piece of paper over here. Okay, so here's our, this is a little drawing lesson, so here we go. So here's our flower, here's our circle, and then it continues here. And we have our, our lines going out from the center all the way around. You have to picture in your artistic eye all these, this, the, this, this is the flower. So we want all the petals to be the same. So I'm gonna do a petal here. This is gonna be the petal where I'm gonna have my, my, little, um, my little guy, ladybug. So I'm gonna just create these petals and wherever they go, see they would come off the page. This would come out like this. These would all be coming around nice and large. And you see what I'm doing is I'm picturing, and I'm when I'm doing it on canvas, this is in my mind's eye, is the, the entire flower. So you have to just pretend that you're going off the canvas onto something else and getting those petals all, see how they're about all the same distance from this center point. So here's my center point. And now I have some some idea of the, and I have all my angles correct because I did that little center point and then the angles all around. All right, so now we've got our little pencil sketch on there or chalk. Chalk would be difficult on this painting because we do have um, um, such a small canvas and paint is, the paint, the chalk is so thick. All right, so I'm just gonna jump right in with some white and make start making my little daisies here, my little petals. And I'm not gonna, this is gonna be such a little fun painting. I'm not gonna be too particular. It's meant to be a loose, messy painting. So I'm just gonna get in some fun white petals and establish those so you can see where they are. Oh, thank you. Someone's bringing me breakfast. Oh, that's gorgeous. Thanks, sweetheart. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, you're the best. And I just got tea brought to me. Yay! Cinnamon tea, my favorite. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going with my petals here. Hey, Giselle, yes. can you close the door? Because Peaches is very chirpy this morning. Oh, yes. Peaches is our little lovebird, and he is a chatterbox. He lives in the near the studio, outside the studio. So for these petals, I'm just going to be placing the base of the petals, and they can bump together. I also might throw in like a little petal back here. Maybe one back here. And I'm gonna keep coming around. Okay. All right, so let's just get this finished up there, a little white in there. Now this is a very big center. I don't know if daisies have this big of a center compared to their petals, but that's okay. <clears throat> we could either do two things. We could make the inside of our petals longer like this and shrink down our circle, which I think I'm obviously gonna do. Let's see, oh, Mary, good, Mary's back. Thanks, Mary. We had to pause that other video because I had a phone call interruption that broke my signal. But we're in airplane mode now, so no more of that. 
So I'm just modifying my petals. And see how forgiving acrylic paint is? You can just come right in and paint it differently. Okay, so got my petals roughed in. And by roughed in, I just am looking at placement and I'm using the brush direction. I'm always painting in the direction of the petal from center to tip. So just keeping that, and it's already looking cute and messy. Now for the center, I wanna make a nice dark center first, and then I'm gonna add lighter details. So I'm going to use my, <clears throat> I'm gonna use a little bit of red and yellow to make orange, but I'm also gonna use a little bit of brown because I want it to be darker. So that looks like a good color. Notice how I'm taking from the edge of my paint and not dipping it in the middle. It's gonna keep my paint a little cleaner. Okay, so that's a nice, pretty dark color. And and really with the, um, I just added a little bit of white because it was too transparent. I do have a dark background already with my brown. So <clears throat> I just took a tiny bit of white to that color. And I can start with a dark orange, which is what I'm going for. So there's my dark orange. So I am painting this sideways. So this is the bottom because um, the way the camera has to be in live uh, footage, it, it just, it's easier if the tripod is to the side of me, not on my lap. And I'm, I'll, I'll figure something out again later on. But each time I videotape, I'll probably make little improvements as I notice things that I can fix. So, um, yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna jump to another section and I'm gonna just do some of the background. So the background in my original painting, I wanted to have it like a nice contemporary, here's the original. Whoa. So this is a nice dark gray along here. And I like that because I wanted something that was kind of contemporary, I guess is the word I was looking for. Um, you know, gray is very popular in home decor and um, if you're hanging this somewhere in your house and you're using some of those current neutrals of gray, you might find that a little more appealing. So I'm going to take a little bit of black and white. Oh, you can see that there, mixing that up. And I'm just going to fill in the background. Now you can come right up to your petals or you can just leave, leave, leave it messy and kind of leave a little brown showing. I kind of want this painting to look like it's a miniature of a larger painting. So I am gonna try and use small, smaller brush strokes so that I can create that feeling of, of a, a larger scale painting. Just keep putting little blacks. So I mean, you can make, you can use black and white and mix it on your canvas. You can mix it. It's it's tricky to mix it on your palette and not be tempted to just get a solid gray. And I don't want solid gray in my background here, so I'm just going to put some little lights and darks in there with my brush to kind of mess it up a little bit. I want it to look gloomy. I just want it to look neutral. Okay, now, <clears throat> since I have the gray on my brush, I'm just going to grab some white. <clears throat> and I want to actually introduce some gray into my petals. So I'm gonna start in the middle of each flower. Just do a little gray in the middle. Now don't worry about the, the, the flowers looking too dark right now because we're gonna layer and layer and layer lots of white. So I want to have some dark near the base. So I'm just using the tip of my brush and I can, if this flower petal is behind the other one, I'm gonna put a little gray along that edge. And my paintbrush handle is so long. And I'm gonna put a little gray along this edge because this petal is behind these other two. 
and then I'm just gonna go around. Oh, I gotta keep my hand from blocking the camera. I'm just gonna go around the, the circle here. See, I'm always holding the brush at the edge here and then pulling down the flower petal. <clears throat> I need a shorter handled brush because my camera's so close. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going around and around, making all these little grays. Cute. Oh, that's awesome, I love it. I want lots of grays because the more grays that are there, the more interest it's gonna have when I put the white on there. Because otherwise, if it's just solid white, it's not gonna look good, it's just gonna have a, um, you know, it'll look very flat. So this is gonna give it more dimension. Oh, yummy tea. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe off my brush and jump to the center. So on this tiny painting, we can just do the whole center right now. And I wanna make it nice and bright. So I'm gonna use um, yellow. I'm still gonna use my orange mixture that I made here with a little bit of red, because I want it to be orangey at first. And I'm gonna get some white. So I get that nice orangey yellow in there and it's fairly bright because I added a little bit of white and I want it to be thick on my brush so I kind of scooped it up and got a little blob because I'm going to I'm going to create a little center here first because Daisy I'm going to create a little center in the middle and then I'm going to go around And I'm going to, it needs to be a little lighter. So I'm, let me, I could scoot this down and show you my whole palette. Okay, so I'm gonna make it a little lighter because I wanted to really contrast the, this background. And I'm just doing a bunch of little tiny dots all around. Okay, so do 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 do. I'm gonna move this all around the daisy, just filling all these darks in with this lighter, lighter orange. And then I'm gonna let that dry because when I, I'm, the next layer is gonna be my bright yellows and I don't want it to mix with the oranges and contaminate the oranges. So I wanna just have a nice, really bright yellow and white sitting right on top and looking nice and bright and shiny. So in that little bit of time, this is already dry. So now I'm gonna come and I'm gonna add in my, um, my brightest white. So I'm just gonna go into the, my clean side of my white See, this is why you use the edges because then you have all this nice clean white. So I'm going to just start putting this on pretty thick in some areas because I want this to be very um, expressive. Actually, I wanna show you something. If you take the water and you add a little bit of water to your white, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn my canvas so I can, don't have to keep whacking the easel with my brush. And if you just do a thin, you see how thin that, that layer is because I added water? You can add a thin layer of white over an area. That's called a glaze. And it just makes a sheer white layer. So that this petal, I've smoothed out some of the gray and some of that contrast by just adding a sheer layer of white. And I allow my gray to show through but I tone it down a little bit. So that's, a, that's layering it in a thin glaze. Or you can come also and add some thick. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of both. That's why I wanted to show you both those techniques. Because if I just do it thick, I'm gonna cover up all my gray. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna do some thin layers. I'm gonna do a thin layer first. 
with some glazing. Doesn't have to be fancy, you just, it's just paint thin with a little bit of water. So I don't wanna lose the grays there, but I do wanna transition them a little bit better. Okay, it's still looking very gloomy, and that is totally typical of this painting. That's I remember this when we painted it larger in the class. Um, and this is also available as an Art Raven box. So if you want to paint this larger and have a 12 by 12, um, we have Pat and I paint this together on our video um, kit that is on the website, Art Rave in a Box. But this little guy this is a good midpoint. None of the brights have been added, and this is where it all comes together. It starts to look like a really bright, pretty daisy. So I'm gonna let these petals dry, and I'm gonna come back to the center, and I'm gonna to switch to my smaller brush, and I'm gonna wet it and kind of, I kind of roll it like this on my palette or paper towel to get it nice and pointy. And now I'm gonna just use white and yellow. So I'm gonna scoop up some yellow and some white. And I want this to be super bright, so I'm gonna just keep a lot, lot of white in there. So our yellow is very transparent, so you have to add white to it, otherwise it just will not show up on your canvas. And I'm not gonna worry about how big these dots are, I'm just going to make a cute little center. And I'm gonna come around and just fill in this little section. And I wanna, I don't care if they overlap and smash together here, but around the, the edges, I wanna have a kind of a fun edge. So I'm gonna slow down when I get towards the edges so that I can, see, I don't care if they crash together here. This is just a cute little daisy. Now on the edges, I'm gonna be very careful to make little tiny dots. I want that to um, come out this way, okay. Okay, so. So what I'm hoping to do, and I mean, I, I know everybody's kind of stuck inside and I think painting is a wonderful thing. I really can't wait to do some paintings myself. Whenever I can um, during this time, I'm going to try to turn my camera on and, um, and just film live. Anything I do that's creative, if I'm working on a personal painting, if I'm working on an art rave painting, maybe even if I'm working on a little drawing or a doodle, um, I'm gonna try and turn my camera on and just see if anybody is on Facebook. If you put your notifications on and you wanna watch or join in or learn something um, maybe, then that option will be there for you. So uh, just keep in mind that Art Rave is here for you and we have often been over the years a source of therapy for people. Um, many customers have shared with me difficult times that they've been going through um, whether it be family related or health related and and they've really expressed how thankful they are that they can come to art raves and enjoy their time painting and that has meant the world to me and it really has been some of the greatest fulfilling moments is knowing that that is what art rave is doing for people it's so much more than just making pretty paintings it really is a way to connect with people, um, a way to kind of forget your stresses and what better time than now to have that available to us. And luckily we have this wonderful technology of FaceTime and Facebook Live where we can share and kind of tune in with each other. So I'm also gonna um, encourage anybody who is 
you know, friends of Art Rave and um, artists with us who paint with us on a regular basis. If you are working on a project at home and you have a question about something, face, feel free to text me and ask me if I'm available and I'd be happy to FaceTime you and look at what you're doing and give you some suggestions. Um, so I'm just throwing that out there and I'm completely open to giving out all kinds of free advice. I mean, I don't even look at it that way, really. It's just, don't don't hold back to call, text, FaceTime, and I'd love to see what you're working on. And if you have a question or if you're stuck on something, um, just reach out to me and I would love to help you out. Okay, so now I'm adding the last layer of white. So I'm getting very generous and I'm even getting a little globby because I want this painting to have some really heavy strokes on here too. So I'm now I'm going from the tip in because I don't want to cover up all my gray. So you see it? Okay, so I'm gonna just keep painting. That was my son's phone. Okay, keep going. And add all those whites. You might need to change your painting around. See, I like adding big blobs. Like this is the this is the finishing touch um, before we get our, our little um, ladybug on. So I, I don't want this part to be blobby because I'm gonna let that dry and that's where I'm gonna paint my ladybug right in here. So I'm gonna just continue. And the big, uh, one of the big features of this painting too is um, these lines that I'm gonna add. Now I'm gonna flatten my brush by patting it side to side and I'm chiseling my brush. Let's see if you can see that. So here it's wide and now it's chiseled. And I'm going to just add some little wispy lines around my petals and what this does is it gives it a really fun energy. And I'm gonna have to come around here with my block my hand. Whoops. Ah I'll do it this way. Okay, turn. And I'm gonna just give a little So all that little white fun marks, though that is, I think what makes the painting so interesting. It looks like it's just having fun, blowing in the wind maybe. And then now I'm gonna come in and continue to add some of my heavy, heavy whites. Heavy painterly, I want it to look painterly. I want it to look kind of spontaneous, not so, so fixed and perfect. All right, so we got this little corner to do and then we're gonna do the ladybug and then we're done. And I'm going to Add thick, thick white, just blob it on. So cute. And I'm gonna start adding my ladybug. So I'm gonna wipe off my brush and rinse it. And it might not be completely dry, but let's see what happens when we start adding some red. I'm gonna put them right here. Perfect. So the, the white was a little damp, but it didn't seem to affect my red too much, so that's good. Now that I want to dry before I do the black. So I'm gonna just rinse off my brush and I'm gonna add the last layer to my center. So you notice how we're hopping back and forth, back and forth. That is, um, what you do in acrylic painting, especially when you're waiting for one area to dry, you just work on something else. So I want this to be white, as white as I can. I'm just tinting it with yellow. I want it to, because I want it to pop out. Yeah, it's not popping out unless I use straight white. So I'm just gonna use straight white. And since this, this is the top of my painting, I'm gonna put white along the top edge of this 
donut here and the bottom top of the donut. So to make it look like it's raised, giving it some, some depth. So top edge here, I'm not going along the bottom because that's where the shadow would be. I'm going along this top edge and then I'm treating this circle as a separate piece and I'm going to shade the top of, I mean, highlight the top of it. So highlights along the top and then shadows along the bottom. I'm going to come in too while this is still drying. I'm going to add, actually add some more orange. So I think I can pump up some orange in here and make it look a little bit more fun. So I'm going to mix some red and yellow, a tiny bit of white, and I'm getting some really good orange here because I think the center looks a little like it's lacking some color. So let's just get some fun orange in here. So I'm going to go more along the bottom because I'm just going to accentuate that shadow area. Oh, that makes a big difference. Nice. I like that. Oh, I hear the birds chirping outside. It sounds so nice. See, I'm kind of stuck inside anyway since I have a, a fractured foot, ankle. But when I get outside and when we all can just get outside and just enjoy some fresh air and some, when you know, on days when the sun's shining, it's going to be really good for everybody. Okay, so I'm wiping that off. And it is still a little wet here, but I'm going to jump in and paint some black because we just have some small little spots. They're just like, I mean, super small dots. I'm going to put a little black head here. I'm kind of putting it on the red and outside the red. So let me turn this so that I can get a good brush angle. So I want the little head to be a little round like that. And then I'm gonna just you know, before I make the black dots, I'm going to add some little highlights to my, my little tiny little highlights just right along the top here like that. Boop. And I also have some little white eyes. I don't know if I can do them this small, but all the paint is wet. Oh yeah, that worked. That works. Okay, so now for the little black dots. So I want to make sure my brush is really dry. Sometimes water droplets will kind of like come down and mess things up. So make sure you have no mystery water drops. And I'm going to just get nice little black on the tip of my brush here. And I'm going to just give little dots to my ladybug. There we go adorable. Maybe I'll throw in a little bit of black and some in here a little bit to kind of pop it up a little bit. Add some little extra pops of black. And that is it, my darlings. Okay, so I think I'm going to, now that it's drying, I might add just a few more heavy blobs of white. Just really load it on. I know where my ladybug is. I don't have to worry about just, I'm just going to really scoop up my white and just put it on super, super thick because I want this to look like it is just really, look at how thick that is. I don't know if you can see, it's like 3D. So super heavy blobs. This is going to make my painting look really pretty. Blobs. Look at that. It's like frosting. It's a whole another dimension to my painting with it. Those. Now when I blob it on like this, of course, it's going to take longer to dry. It could take a day or longer because it's really thick. But um, I don't care. That's what I want. Oops, there we go. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today. And this is an adorable little addition to my 4x4 collection. All right, tuning out, see you later.